The walls of the old town of Sarajevo. Sarajevo is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. It's the place where East meets West, where Slavs meet the Ottomans. It is a conflation of culture. You can walk through the various quarters of this city and really see that fusion of cultures, which has been both its blessing and its curse. It makes it a very special place, but just 25 years ago, this city was subject to constant shelling during the siege of Sarajevo. Just look closely here, I can show. You can see Everywhere you look, you see buildings which have got the, the fatal pop marks shown by bullet spray. You see the telltale holes showing where the building would have been hit by bullets. This would have been an ideal vantage point for uh, someone who was maybe a sniper, and no doubt would have invited similar fire. And here's an even clearer example of a bullet damaged building and you see this everywhere in Sarajevo it was after all under siege for three years uh, between 1992 and 95 it always staggers me that these events could have happened so close to home uh, just in the middle of Central Europe but we are witnessing this again now in the Ukraine another 25 years on uh, so I've come to Bosnia this week uh, really to show support to uh, my friends in Bosnia and to ministers there to you know, re-emphasise the need for them to tackle uh, their ongoing issues of corruption uh, but also to make sure that we're thinking of them while the events in Ukraine unfold. So why does Bosnia matter? Well, this is the spot where the First World War started. This is the car in which Archduke Franz Ferdinand was travelling before he was assassinated by the Serb Gavrilo Princip, which started the events which unfolded uh, into the 1914-18 war. And this is the actual spot where Gavrilo Princip uh, fired that fatal bullet the actual spot, and as you can see, if I turn around here, it was actually just passing this bridge where Franz Ferdinand uh, met his end uh, through that assassination. And this is why Bosnia matters. I think it's been put clearest to me when someone said, this part of the world exports its problems. This is where Eastern Europe meets Western Europe and what was the Ottoman Empire. You have the three distinct communities uh, in terms of the uh, ethnic Serbs, uh, the Croats and the Bosniaks, often referred to as the Bosnian Muslim. But it really reflects the uh, clash of cultures here. But interestingly now, you know, this is one of the countries that forms that beltway between the Western European countries who are part of NATO and uh, Putin's Russia and the countries in his sphere of influence. We've already seen and witnessed, obviously, the terrible war uh, that he's prosecuting in Ukraine. But I can also tell you that there's lots more activities by Putin in other neighbouring states that form that frontier between NATO countries and his own. And Bosnia is again at the epicentre of that. Uh, we are seeing willing accomplices here in Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, through the ethnic Serbs in Republika Srpska. And we are very determined to actually remind the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina that Great Britain are their friends. And just as we've stood firm with Ukraine, uh, we will stand firm with any aggression towards any state uh, where Putin is agitating.
Potokari. Potokari is where we all know that the uh, massacre genocide at Srebrenica took place. And this has been established as a memorial to that. This is the factory premises which were the headquarters of the Dutch UN forces to whom the refugees from Srebrenica were, were bound over for safekeeping and uh, the rest of the story will unfold. You see this mass of people, this is where, and when people are deciding, okay, are we going into the woods? What's going to happen to our families? What's going to happen to the female members of our families? This is also the day when that is happening. And it's happening, you will see now where, the very entrance of the town itself. This is the memorial to all the victims of the genocide at, at, at Srebrenica here at Potokari. This place was established by Paddy Ashdown when he was the UN High Representative here. And this monument here has the name of every person who was murdered. And over there, Reaching Forever, is a series of memorial stones. These are the locations of where the massacres took place. This, the entirety of those massacred. And reaching out for as far as the eye can see are 6,000 individual headstones for those whom their bodies or their remains have been identified. 2,000 still remain with no identification, nothing remains pertaining to them. And for those families who are looking desperately still for any sign of what happened to their loved one without any remaining body parts.